Eve has insatiable ambition and talent. An improbable person with a contempt for humanity, an inability to love or be loved. But how can such a woman fool so many? Well, how does any Eve do it? Hi, I'm Lucy. Thank you for joining me for another video. And if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. I hope you enjoy it. I'm happy to bring you a Silver Seniors Silver Screen Special Biography on an old classic black and white movie, All About Eve. But before we get started, please kindly take a moment right now and click the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be alerted of every time I upload a new video. She's a girl of so many interests. Pretty rare quality these days. A girl of so many rare qualities. So she seems. So you've pointed out so often. So many qualities so often. Her loyalty, efficiency, devotion, warmth, and affection, and so young. So young and so fair. If you haven't already seen this movie and love the old-time classics like I do, I highly recommend it. And just in case you haven't seen it, please be warned there will be some spoilers in this video. Eve, my understudy. Didn't you know? Of course I knew. Just slipped your mind. I love doing bios on old classic movies. So if you enjoy this video and would like to see more similar to this one, please comment below or let me know which one is your favorite or which one you'd like me to do a bio on and I will try my best to do it. Find out. Only thing. What I go after, I want to go after. I don't want it to come after me. Also, please watch this video to the end to see some really nice behind-the-scenes photos that you've probably never seen before. And I'm also including some interesting facts and trivia, too. Don't get up. And please stop acting as if I were the queen mother. Sorry, I didn't... Outside of a beehive, Margot, your behavior would hardly be considered either queenly or motherly. You're in a beehive, pal, didn't you know? We're all busy little bees, full of stings, making honey day and night. Aren't we, honey? And so without further ado, through the magic of my computer, I've colorized some of the old black and white pictures from some of my favorite scenes from this movie. And hopefully there are some of your favorites too, which I find that you can see more details in them that way. Please let me know what you think. Okay, so this movie was released in the USA in 1950, and it stars one of my favorites, Betty Davis. And some of her co-stars were Anne Baxter, Marilyn Monroe, Celeste Tome, Thelma Ritter, George Sanders, Gary Merrill, Hugh Marlowe, Gregory Radoff, and others. It was directed by Joseph Mankiewicz and produced by Daryl Zanuck. It won six Oscars in total for the movie and some of its cast, including Best Picture. The movie is about a seemingly timid but secretly ruthless protege who insinuates herself into the lives of an aging Broadway star and her circle of theater friends. The storyline is Eve Harrington, who's played by Anne Baxter, is waiting backstage to meet her idol, talented but aging Broadway star Margot Channing, played by Betty Davis. 
It seems innocent enough as Eve explains that she has seen Margot in every performance of her current play. Margot and her friends take Eve under their wing, but only theater critic Addison DeWitt, played by George Sanders, sees through Eve's evil plan, which is to take Margot's part and her fiancé, Bill Simpson, played by Gary Merrill. And now I've also got some juicy trivia gossip for you if you're interested. One of them is Betty Davis fell in love with her co-star in real life, Gary Merrill, during the shoot of this movie. And then the two of them married in July of 1950, a few weeks right after filming was completed. And then they also adopted a baby girl whom they named Margot. Also, this movie holds the record for the most female acting Oscar nominations in a single film with four of them. Anne Baxter and Betty Davis for Best Actress and Celeste Holm and Thelma Ritter for Best Supporting Actress. And some more is upon learning that he had cast Betty Davis. One of her former directors, Edmund Golding, rang up Joseph Mankiewicz and warned him that she would grind him down into a fine powder. This was a reference to her on-set behavior not the least of which was rewriting her dialogue. The warning proved to be unnecessary, however, since Davis knew better than to mess with Mankiewicz's finely tuned screenplay. In fact, Mankiewicz found her to be one of the most professional and agreeable actresses he'd ever worked with. And co-star Celeste Holmes spoke about her experience with Betty Davis on the first day of shooting. She said, and I quote, I walked onto the set on the first day and said, good morning. And do you know her reply? She said, oh shit, good manners. I never spoke to her again, ever. End of quote. <laughs> I can imagine that, can't you? <laughs> During the scene in the out-of-gas car, Margot tells Karen that she loves Bill, but she's afraid that Bill is actually in love with Margot Channing, the stage persona, instead of Margot Channing, the woman. Bill's in love with Margot Channing. He's fought with her, worked with her, loved her. But ten years from now, Margot Channing will have ceased to exist. And what's left will be what? Betty Davis and Gary Merrill, who married after filming this movie together, like I said previously, did indeed divorce almost exactly 10 years to the day after their wedding. Davis was quoted as saying that they had married their characters from the movie rather than the actual people. Wow. Years later, Betty Davis said in an interview, filming All About Eve in 1950 was a very happy experience. The only bitch in the cast was Celeste Holm. <laughs> that sounds like Betty Davis talking. I can picture her saying that. Margot Channing's famous cocktail dress was an Edith Head creation. And to Head's horror, just as they were about to go film the cocktail party, she found that the dress didn't quite fit Betty Davis in the shoulders. And there was no time to fix the dress. But fortunately, Davis hit on the bright idea of simply slipping the dress off her shoulders. And 33 years later, life imitated art when Anne Baxter stepped into Betty Davis's shoes to replace her on the series Hotel in 1983 after she fell ill. Ms. Davis never returned to the show. Betty Davis admitted later on that Joseph Mankiewicz's casting her in the movie saved her career from oblivion after a series of unsuccessful movies. She said in a 1983 interview, He resurrected me from the dead. 
Betty Davis filmed all of her scenes in this movie in 16 days. Betty Davis's marriage to William Sherry was in the throes of breaking up while she was making this film. Her raspy voice in the film is largely due to the fact that she burst a blood vessel in her throat from screaming at her soon-to-be ex-husband during one of their many rows. Director Mankiewicz liked the croaky quality, so he didn't have Davis try to work around it. And for the film's Hollywood premiere at the Grauman's Chinese Theater, the neighboring hotel Roosevelt blanked out most of its neon letters to simply spell out Eve. And also Betty Davis's performance as Margot Channing is ranked number five on Premier Magazine's 100 Greatest Performances of All Time. And a bit of Joseph Mankiewicz's direction that gave Betty Davis a huge handle on her character was that he told her Margot treated a mink coat like it was a poncho. The movie's line, Fasten Your Seatbelts, It's Going to Be a Bumpy Night, was voted as the number nine movie quote by the American Film Institute. And Zsa, Zsa Gabor kept arriving on the set because she was jealous of her husband, George Sanders, in his scenes with the young blonde starlet, Marilyn Monroe. Poor Zsa, Zsa. Betty Davis had just turned 42 as she undertook the role of Margot Channing, and Anne Baxter, still an up-and-comer, not only wowed audiences with her performance, but successfully pressured the powers that be for an Oscar nomination in the Best Actress category rather than Best Supporting Actress. This is thought to have split the vote between herself and Davis. The winner for the 1950 Best Actress was Judy Holliday for her noticeable turn in Born Yesterday in 1950. So Baxter's action, in effect, blocked Davis's chances for the win. And Betty Davis said in her autobiography, I can think of no project that from the outset was as rewarding from the first day to the last. It is easy to understand why. It was a great script, had a great director, and was a cast of professionals, all with parts they liked. It was a charmed production from the word go. And despite their character's tense relationship on screen, Betty Davis and Ann Baxter got along very well during filming. The studio tried to play that all up during the filming, recalled Baxter. But I liked Betty very much. She'd come on the set and go S at me. But it was just a joke between us. Davis liked Baxter too, which was quite a compliment as Davis reportedly didn't often like her female co-stars. She felt that Baxter did an excellent job with her part as Eve and publicly praised her for it. Good for Miss Davis. In an introduction to the film on Turner Classic Movies in November 2008, Robert Osborne said that everyone assumed that Betty Davis had based her characterization on Tallulah Bankhead, even Tallulah herself. In fact, Bankhead even considered suing 20th Century Fox, but decided not to because Betty Davis did such a good job. I've just been witched out of a million dollars by Betty being as good as me. But in 1952, Tallulah Bankhead starred in a radio adaptation of All About Eve, which featured in the supporting cast Mary Orr, who was the author of the original story, The Wisdom of Eve. And according to Robert Osborne, during a rehearsal, Tallulah asked Mary Orr, I was the prototype for Margot Channing, wasn't I? And Orr set the record straight and said, no. Well, Tallulah reportedly never spoke to Mary Orr again after that. 
The character played by Marilyn Monroe is called Miss Caswell. Caswell was the middle name of Mary Orr. The uncredited author of the short story the movie was based on. And Oscar winner George Sanders spent his time between scenes napping in his dressing room. <laughs> And Baxter later remarked that the sometimes still sleepy actor took about seven takes before he got it right, which worked well for his characterization. And Gary Merrill described the experience of working with Marilyn Monroe in his autobiography as occasionally frustrating. He describes a dinner party that Betty Davis hosted the night before she and Monroe were to shoot a scene together. The party went on quite late, he recalls, but Marilyn excused herself early because she had to work the next morning. We all knew the scene Marilyn had to work on the next morning was really Betty's scene and that Marilyn had only a few lines. Betty had more, but she was an experienced actress and accomplished the scene with little bother. It had to be done in 10 takes. However, Marilyn kept forgetting her lines. And in the theater scene, Betty Davis mentions playwright Arthur Miller. Marilyn Monroe, who had one of her first roles in his film, later married Miller. There never was and there never will be another like you. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. I'll never forget this night as long as I live. And I'll never forget you for making it possible. I'm nobody's fool, least of all yours. A waiter. And that isn't a waiter, my dear. That's a butler. Well, I can't yell, oh, butler, can I? Maybe somebody's name is butler. You have a point. An idiotic one, but a point. There are very few moments in life as good as this. Let's remember it. To each of us and all of us, never have we been more close. May we never be farther apart. If you like that one, we've got a lot more. Hotter than your morning coffee. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like, comment below, share with others, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Please come back to see the next one. Until then, bye for now, and be blessed.